In this Sean Speaks episode, I get to speak to you from my heart about an important part of parenting, family life, and a parent's mental health and mindset. I want to help you thrive in how you speak to your kids and how you speak to yourself. Sean Speaks is a live teaching I did with a Zoom room filled with my VIP members. It's interactive, it's spontaneous, it's raw and unedited. If you'd like to go deeper with me, visit my website. Hey, you know what? There's been some amazing TV sitcoms that have been made since we were kids, haven't there? If you ask 10 people, like, hey, what is your favorite sitcom of all time? You're probably gonna get 10 different responses. Here's what I think of when I think of great sitcoms. I think of The Cosby Show. I think of Family Matters. I think of Modern Family. I used to love this show called Coach back in the day. There's some more modern shows that some of the uh, younger parents like that are called like New Girl. Some of us remember growing up with Full House. I was just talking about that on my podcast just yesterday about how, how hard it is to find a good family sitcom where the parents are portrayed as like very healthy, normal adults. And you found that in Full House and The Cosby Show. Oh, I grew up on the show Cheers. And now to this day, there's, there's these uh, awesome streaming channels where you get to watch these amazing shows like Seinfeld, which I'm still laughing at. Years later, it still just gets me and it just cracks me up. My wife's favorite sitcom is a no brainer. Oh my gosh, she loves Friends. And I love Friends. It's a fun question to ask people, you know, who's your favorite friend? And ask them why. But do you know there's one show that actually tops all these shows? There's one sitcom which is now being called the greatest sitcom of all time and the most watched sitcom of all time. And I haven't even mentioned it yet. And that show, my friends, is The Office. If you if uh, if you are a fan of The Office, then you know these characters. And if you've been living under a rock, you've missed this opportunity to see this show, but it's still streaming on Peacock. And I was watching it uh, recently with my wife. Even just last night, we watched an episode. And so it just it is so funny. So you know these characters, Michael Scott, Dwight Schrute, Jerome Halpert, Pam Beasley, Ryan Howard, Andy Bernard, Stanley Hudson, Kevin Malone, Meredith Palmer, Angela Smith, Oscar Martinez, Phyllis Vance, Jan Levison, Toby Flenderson, Kelly Kapoor, Cree Braddon, Daryl Philbin. And then later on, you know, you saw these characters come to uh, popularity. Aaron Haddon, Gabe Lewis, and Holly Flax. Just for many people, just hearing these characters' names brings up laughter and memories because the show just captivated audiences. And here's what I want you to think about for a second. One of the things I noticed about The Office is that here's what my theory is on The Office. And I know this is, a, this is about parenting, but just hang tight with me. You know what The Office really is? What The Office really is, it's a whole office of crazy, weird people. That's what it is. In the whole office, and I listed a lot of characters, like you probably weren't thinking too, just listening to all those names, like, wow, that is a lot of people in that office. But here's the thing, it's the whole office of weird, crazy people doing weird, eccentric things and two kind of normal people just sitting there. Every episode, it's the same thing. And those two normal people are just rolling their eyes, reacting to an office full of eccentric weirdos. And those two people are, of course, Jim and Bam, Pam Beasley, or, you know, Pam, uh, Pam Beasley. They, of course, get married. Spoiler alert. And you know what I realized about this and is that if I look at Pam Beasley and I was watching them last night, you know what I thought of you guys? I thought, like, this is actually good parenting, what they're doing. Like, Jim and Pam actually uh, are, like, showing me and showing us, in a sense, some really amazing qualities of what a good parent does and doesn't do. So I did this. I got four quotes from these websites, like the greatest quotes of all time from The Office. And what most of these quotes are from, they're actually from Michael Scott. But if you simmer through and you look, you can see there's some amazing quotes. And I want to read this quote to you and just share with you how they can help us to be healthy, amazing, great parents because that is the goal of parenting 
The goal of parenting is to be Jim and Pam. Hear me out for a second. The goal of a good, stable parent, I think you'd agree, is to be these loving, consistent, normal people in a house filled with crazy people. It's not like, does not make sense, no offense to our kids, but they're kids. They're supposed to act like kids. A two-year-old is supposed to be very whiny and selfish. A six-year-old is supposed to be very, very emotional, very up and down, very much like, why aren't you giving me these things? I want the whole world to revolve around me. An 11-year-old is supposed to be very sassy and very much like, why, why are you doing this? Do this for me. A 13-year-old is supposed to act like a 13-year-old. It's a, it's a hormonal 13-year-old girl. She's supposed to be really up one day and then really down five minutes later. Your 14-year-old son is supposed to act like a 14-year-old son, which is like extremely lazy one moment and they're just bouncing off the walls, driving you nuts the second. Your 17-year-old is supposed to be detaching from the family, rolling their eyes, judging their parents, calling them weird. I mean, like, why do you do that? You guys are so done. I'm the smartest one in the room. And what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to be like Jim and Pam. We're supposed to be like Jim and Pam. Here's a couple quotes. All right, this is so interesting because I found this quote and this is the exact episode that my wife and I watched together last night. So I think it's somewhere around uh, season seven and they have their first baby. And they're just like, all about this baby. They're making their uh, their whole world is kind of revolved around the baby. They can't go out. Pam is like stuck at home. She comes back to work and they're looking at pictures of their baby and they're dreaming about being with the baby, how much they miss the baby because they got two working parents now and the baby must be taken care of by somebody else. And here's what Jim says. I got to tell you, this baby is amazing. She gets me out of everything. And I, and I love her. I also love her very much. So it's supposed to be fun. He delivered it better than me because he's a professional actor. But it's like the joke was like he's talking about how his baby gets him out of things. And there's like, oh, wait, that doesn't sound good. I actually love the baby. But here's what we see from Jim, especially in this season. Their whole world is revolving around this baby. Like their world is not revolving around work. Their world is not revolving around their golf game. Their world is not revolving around themselves. And that is what good parents do. And this is the danger that we all face every day. There's just so many distractions everywhere. Distracting to go working too much, drinking too much. Distractions to be on our phone too much. Distraction to be caught up in our own selfishness, our own fears, our own finances, our own, own, own. And what we see with Jim and Pam is a reminder. It's like, look, uh, family first. Quote number two is really interesting. Now, the show is, one of the dynamics of the show is this little arch nemesis enemies between Jim and Dwight Schrute. They sit next to each other. They drive each other nuts. And Dwight is, of all the weirdos in the office, Dwight is definitely in the top one or two. He's a, quite a weirdo. And uh, they're just always bickering and doing these wars and pranks with each other. But then in the later seasons, what happens is that uh, Jim leaves the office and he goes and works with a different company. And you know what he says? He says this quote, I miss Dwight. Congratulations, universe. You win. What does this have to do with parenting? You know what it is? It's just a reminder. It's just a reminder for all of us. Parenting is so temporary. Having our kids live with us in our homes is so, so temporary. We are going to be looking back on these seasons even these hard hard seasons that you might be in right now and we're going to say what jim is saying you know what i miss it i miss it congratulations i miss it how i miss it i don't know but i miss the bad days i miss the ugly days i miss the good days and for us to really soak in the nectar of this season i just want us all to wake up every day and be like this is this is it this is my day to love on my kids, to love on myself, to be the best parent that I can be because it's not going to last forever. And for those of us that are struggling with our mindset, our emotions, that could be absolutely life-changing for us. This mindset of like, this is not going to last forever. Let's soak it up. Quote number three, Jim is looking back on his life 
and he says this, you know, on this whole office that has caused him a lot of stress and pain. And this is what he says, you know, everything I owe, everything I have, I owe to this job, Jim says, this stupid, wonderful, boring, amazing job. <laughs> you know what? That's family life right there. They just drive us bonkers, don't they? They just bring out the worst in us. And they bring out the best. But what Jim is kind of reminding us here is, you know, if we don't have our family, what do we even have, right? If we don't have our family, we don't have these close connections. You might have a great house, a big, a nice fancy car. You might have that promotion, that third promotion, that fifth promotion. You might have a big bank account. But you know what? Like, it's the people. It's the people in the house. It's the connections. It's the memories. You know, I couldn't find a quote that I was looking for. But I think one of the reasons why Jim and Hal and Jim and Pam are heroes, and they're kind of like the heroes of the office, because you have anti-heroes, you have protagonists and antagonists, is like they just love these people. They love them. And they love them well. And they accept them. And they just show up as these stable adults in a room full of children every day at the office. I couldn't find a quote on that, and I think I know why. Is because they never actually come out and say, I just love these people. We hear Michael Slott say that quite a bit. But with Jim and Pam, you know what they do? They just have love in their actions. That's what they do. They just show these people that they love him by how they act, how they don't judge them, how they care for them, how they, you know, uh, give them like wisdom, how they sometimes counsel them when they're going, they're spiraling down there. And then here is, uh, here's the last quote that I really loved. It's from Pam. And this is what she says. She's reflecting on the chaos of the office. And she's thinking about her life as a mom now. And she's really talking about how her life, you know, at home now, has become kind of plain. And how it's so different than her life at the office, right? Which is so chaotic and dramatic. And here's what Pam says. She says, you know what? There's a lot of beauty in ordinary things. Isn't that kind of the point? I think so much of good parenting is just about our mindset. It's about how we think. And I think that that right there is such a special quote for us parents. It's just this beauty in the ordinary things of everyday life, like just sitting there doing puzzles you know, with your spouse or just sitting there watching a you know, cheesy Hallmark movie with your kids or just going out to ice cream or just breaking bread, sitting there around the Christmas tree, driving them to their practice here and there. <sighs> These things uh, are hard for us. But as Pam kind of says, that's the beauty of this season that we're in. And it's not going to last forever. Our kids are going to leave the house one day. Maybe we'll be all grandparents one day. Maybe our life is going to be ended short because of an accident or an illness. We're all going to face crises and ups and downs. But my fellow parents, I just want us all to be like Jim and Pam. Be these loving, consistent people in a home filled with craziness. And just love these people well. Parents, thank you for letting me be a positive voice in your life. I love you and I love your family. If you're sick and tired of those same painful patterns in your parenting or the same painful bad behaviors in your kids, then what are you waiting for? Join me in my VIP membership. I'd love to speak with you and give you the specific tools that you need.